là, putain. Non, plus près. Ouais, grave. On voit mieux que les rues et la fenêtre. Porte de la ville. Hey everyone, Robin here. It's great to see you again. Uh, it's been, I guess, about a, a year that I haven't been here on YouTube. I've posted just one short video uh, recently. And I'm coming back to talk to you about my trip that I took to Scotland a couple of weeks ago. And during that trip, I decided that I would try to use the Fujifilm X100V here. And uh, it was actually a loan from Fujifilm France, and so thank you guys for lending me this camera. It was a one-week trip in, uh, in Edinburgh, we just stayed uh, in the city, and I uh, had a great time with it. I also brought my Fujifilm X-T3 and some lenses with it, but that was my main camera. I put the filter uh, from Tiffin, the Black Pro Mist, one quarter that I already had, and Fujifilm was kind enough to lend me the WR uh, adapter, I guess that's how they call it. And so you're gonna see this whole trip, I, and I, I have great things to tell you about it. It was great to shoot street, it was great to shoot my everyday uh, life during that trip, and uh, so you're gonna see how all of this went. So we're leaving Paris by train uh, from Paris Gare du Nord to St Pancras, London, and then we took another train to Edinburgh. It was a bit longer, but uh, overall it was totally worth it. It was better for the environment, and also uh, it allowed me to take pictures of the journey and not just the destination. Throughout this trip, I mostly counted on the exposure compensation dial for the exposure with only the aperture that was set in manual. It allowed me to get pictures like these ones with darker shadows and where you really focus on the subject. After the two hour and 15 minute train ride from Paris to St. Pancras, you just have to cross the street and you get to King's Cross. It does take a bit more time than the plane, but on the other hand, it was a way for us to enjoy the journey and not just the destination. It allowed us to look at our plans again, to look at the cities that we passed through, like this one here in Newcastle, and also just enjoy the ride, see the landscapes evolve, the flora evolve, and just look at this gorgeous coastline here in Scotland, right before we arrived in Edinburgh. Right after you pass by Holyrood Park, here we are in Waverley Station, which is actually the only city named after a book and a character, and that was it for the first day. The second day was the day when we walked the most. I think it was about 10 miles or 16 kilometers, and we started the day with the Botanic Garden. It was the perfect destination to try out the X100V's macro and close-up capacities. The Royal Botanic Garden is absolutely gorgeous, and I would strongly recommend you visit it if you get the chance to. And after that, we went to Stockbridge, got to do a bit more street photography, which was really fun with this camera. Overall, the camera is very discreet, especially here in black. I'm really glad that Fujifilm lent it to me with this color. The camera is great for travel. It's small, compact, fairly light, and it's also very discreet. People in the street think that you just have a film camera and don't really pay attention to you. Also, when you use a camera in the street, there's nothing more confrontational than putting your camera up to your eye, signaling the other person that you're actually going to take a picture of them. And so with the tilt-up screen, I noticed that it was much easier than before with the X100F, for instance, to take pictures in the street without really being noticed. But the X100V also shines as a simple everyday travel camera where you just take pictures of the places that you see, the different scenes that you encounter and the people that you meet. However, there were also times because of the 35 equivalent millimeter of the camera that I had to take panoramas like here and stitch them up later in post. Dean Village is one of the many neighborhoods in Edinburgh that are absolutely gorgeous and where you really get a sense of strong history.
as I said before, compared to a 28 millimeter field of view, for instance, you crop a bit more, but on the other hand, it allows you to focus more on your subject. And in case you want to see more pictures of Edinburgh that I took that are not here on this video, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Robin. After such a long day of walking, we decided we would take the bus to go across town to Newtown and then walk all the way up to Carlton Hill. Last time I'd been to Edinburgh was in 2010 and for all those years I had remembered this place as probably the most beautiful city in Europe and I was really worried that I might actually be disappointed and that my brain had played some tricks on me but when I got back there, looked at the view and I just remembered right away that it was not just fantasy but it was actually the most beautiful city in Europe. Obviously being there around sunset did help a little bit. These are the last pictures I took on that day. It was such a gorgeous day and on day three we decided to change and visit downtown a bit more and we started with Princess Street Gardens and uh, then we decided to focus more on Old Town. It's funny to think that these gardens used to be just a massive swamp and now they're right outside of Waverly Station in the middle of city center and uh, they're so gorgeous. Oh, and in case you're wondering, this is the gardener's cottage. Not bad, right? We passed our first backpiper and then we were on the way to Old Town. Old Town is located on a hill and it's mostly made up of these gorgeous old streets with cobblestones on it. And between each of these streets you find like this here uh, some closes that are just small pathways that have stairs that lead from one street to another. Old Town might be fairly touristy, it's still nevertheless absolutely gorgeous and I would strongly recommend that to enjoy it more you just take these closes like this one here, walk from one to the other, discover there are uh, small squares that sometimes are hiding behind buildings and it's uh, absolutely worth it to go there. Because of the focal length of the X100V, it's not always ideal to take pictures without looking, but sometimes it does work. It's easier if you have a wider field of view, like 28mm, like on the Ricoh GR, but it does work a little bit. What did I tell you about walking through closes? It's always worth it. Plus, here you get to see the Riders Museum. When I do street photography, sometimes I'm lucky, as with the uh, lady in front of the red cabin, and I just take pictures while I'm passing by, but sometimes it's a bit harder and I try to find the right composition and try to find a subject. And here in this case, I actually just heard a door open here on the left and I'm waiting for a man. So I'm waiting for him to get out of the doorway. I'm standing right there so that I have nice leading lines and just waiting to take the shot. And this is another example where sometimes it's nice to stick at a certain spot to wait for the right person to come in. I don't know about you, but when I'm visiting a new city or a new town, I'm always so excited and so visually stimulated that I want to take pictures all the time. Yeah. 
This is another clothes that's leaving Old Town and as you walk up the 100 steps it's recommended that at the end you just turn around and enjoy the view of the castle with the steps winding down. I also took the same picture at night. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. On day four we walked even more and decided to go for a hike. We went to Holyrood Park, which is in the middle of the city, but it still feels like you're surrounded by nature. And in this case, because it was the middle of spring, the park was just covered with these gorgeous yellow flowers. And by the way, I forgot their name, so if you do know it, feel free to write it down in the comments. And maybe you can tell from this shot, but actually in Holyrood Park, in the middle of it, is this uh, extinct volcano and the top of it is called Arthur's Seat. There were obviously a few tourists on the way up, it was the middle of spring, apparently it's even worse in the summer, but hey, what can I say, I'm one myself. As you can see from these pictures, the X100V does not necessarily shine with landscape photography in the traditional sense of the word. The focal length of 35mm is too tight if you want to shoot large vistas. And on the other hand, it's a bit too wide if you want to shoot tight and reach for places that are further away. However, where it does shine is whenever you want to take pictures of someone and include them in the landscape. If you want to take more uh, contextual photography or photos of details that you see along the way. It also works pretty well if you can include an element in the foreground. My recommendation if you go to Holyrood Park is don't just stick with Arthur's seat. Also go to the Salisbury Crags, which you can see here. Along with that of Calton Hill, this place, uh, the Salisbury Crags, this was definitely my favorite view of Edinburgh. Isn't that just magnificent? Overall, I very rarely use my X-T3 with the telephoto lens here in Edinburgh. I did use it actually here in Holyrood Park. I'm not going to show you the pictures because I think that these with the X100V actually are uh, more than enough. And I also did use it, however, on the other hand, in Calton Hill to get a closer look at the buildings. However, I do think that I would have been more than fine using only the X100V over these few days. It's great for street photography, it's great for landscape if you manage to include someone or something in the foreground or have some more contextual photography, and I think it's an absolutely great camera. As I said, there are only a few things that could be improved over uh, on this camera. Um, Maybe one of the things that could be improved is taking inspiration from the Ricoh GR series and the possibility of editing your photos in camera with all of the presets and everything instead of has it having to use the, uh, the Fuji RAW Studio app. And um, I guess it, it is a bit, uh, quite a bit heavier than the... Uh, than the Ricoh GR as well, and maybe something that they could, add, you could add uh, at Fujifilm for the next iteration is adding uh, st some sort of stabilization. I'm aware that it would uh, suck up the ba the battery very quickly, but uh, I'm ready to have a couple more batteries with me to uh, to compensate for that. And I guess that's pretty much it. I'm really um, in love with this camera. It's really fun to use. 
I tr used it very differently than I would use my X-T3. Um, and it's really fun to use some, a new piece of gear and realizing that you could get some photos that would be, uh, I guess, harder to get with another camera. It's, uh, it's, I wish I could keep it, and uh, but I'm gonna have to return it very soon to, uh, to Fujifilm. So once again, thank you to Fujifilm France for lending me this camera and I'll see you soon.